Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creole, that girl who brings that spice to pop culture and sci-fi analysis. So today, um, I've actually been sitting on doing this video for a while. Several people have seen uh, this particular Vanity Fair article. And what stuck out to me was a little different take than what others have made on it. So why don't we go ahead and get started and I'll show you exactly what caught my particular attention. So here in Vanity Fair, and I admit I'm one of those people who actually reads Vanity Fair um, just to kind of catch up on Hollywood happenings, entertainment industry. I kind of rotate between Vanity Fair Hollywood Reporter and Deadline. So I'm not so much doing the Screen Rant Collider Circuit, but this is kind of how I do things. And this title here um, about the Snyder Cut, the thing that stuck out to me was this line here called Toxic Fandoms. Now, I am an MCU girl, so I do not have any dog in this fight where it comes to the Snyder Cut. But what I am observing is a lot of the show media trying to shame the fans about uh, this win, or I consider to be a win, for uh, fans who wanted the Snyder Cut to happen. So let's look down here a little bit to see what Miss Joanne Robinson has to say. Now she says, and she starts out, back in 2015 in the packed Hall H of the San Diego Comic-Con, Warner Brothers panel host and actress Aisha Tyler was doing what all Comic-Con panelists hosts do, hyping up the crowd. Now I'm gonna kind of stop you there a little bit because for some folks who don't know who Aisha Tyler is, some of you may remember Aisha Tyler as she's actually, she's a black actress and you may remember her as Ross's girlfriend from Friends, but I remember her as the amazing, amazing Lana Kane in the animated series Archer on FX. So back to the article here. So, she continues, but the language I saw her use to introduce the director of the upcoming Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice has always struck me as unintentionally chilling. Hmm. So she continues, quoting Aisha, I know somebody out there has some unnatural love for the person who is about to come out on this stage, but it can't be as deep, intense, or unnatural as mine. I can't say it as cool as she does. And the crowd erupted into hysterical screams around me as actor, <laughs> it's a director, not the actor, director Jack Snyder, bounded onto the stage. Now, for those of you who have gone to Comic-Con, you know the fan energy is high. And can you imagine, just like you love Jackson and love Zack Snyder, you are so hyped up, you wanna see the Snyder Cut and you get to introduce this dude on stage. I would be excited. And I wouldn't call it unnatural. I wouldn't call it unnatural on the outside looking in, but I understand that. I understand that passion and I absolutely love it. I'm biased because I love Aisha Tyler, even more biased as she's such a fangirl about this. But let's continue uh, on here. So, sorry to get that out of the way. So she continues on, the author, and says, Five years and at least one controversial film later, that unnatural love helped to achieve what many consider considered impossible. 
like Superman rising up from the grave in 2017's Justice League, the fabled Snyder Cut will emerge in 2021, actually on HBO Max. The result of Warner Media finally acknowledging a long and occasionally toxic fan campaign. There's that word again, toxic, toxic. That makes good intention fundraising with coordinated and vicious social media attacks on critics, myself included. Is vicious that fans push back or well, we'll get to it a little later. So social media attacks on critics, myself included. Has one company in its desire to stir up attention around the launch of its streaming service, HBO Max, emboldened bad behavior? Or is this just the new normal fandom ownership in our social media age? Really? Hmm. Bad fan behavior. She doesn't like the wording that Aisha used for the passion she had introducing Zack Snyder. And she's used the word toxic. Hmm. So since I don't like to dumb things down here on this channel, why don't we consult exactly what toxic is? I'm not addicted to lecturing people. <laughs> So let's get a little nerdy here. Using Merriam-Webster's dictionary online. Toxic, adjective, definition of toxic. Let's start with the first one. Containing or being poisonous material, especially when capable of causing death or serious debilitation. Do we think that's what the author of this article considered toxic when it comes to fans? No. Okay, so let's go to number two. Exhibiting symptoms of infection or toxicosis. Uh, I don't think this is what the author was referring to with toxic fans. It doesn't quite seem right, right? No. Let's try the third one here. Hmm. Extremely harsh, malicious, or harmful. Hmm. Could this be what Ms. Robinson was referring to with respect to toxic fans? Yep. Let's put a pin in that and come back. So further on down in this article, um, Ms. Robinson just basically talks about the background about the Snyder Cut, the behavior she doesn't like that she sees in fans, and that's pretty much the filler of, of what this piece is about. And of course, she pulls up a couple of tweets from some of the actors who have been behind the Snyder Cut and frankly seem to be very, very happy that the fans got the Snyder Cut. But the tone of this article, you know, it's just really, really anti-fan. And it's, and just the vitriol that you get, it's, it's very, it's very disappointing. I mean, so basically in this article also further, she takes great pains to point out just how she's been attacked by the fans on social media, death threats and all of that. And haven't seen any proof about that, kind of like the Kelly Marie Tran incident with uh, with Star Wars. Um, you're always gonna have that fringe element of crazy. I don't care if it's online, I don't care if it's in real life, you're going to get that. But that small percentage doesn't represent the fandom as a whole, um, case in point, years ago when it was a Stargate SG-1 fan and Sam got a new boyfriend named Pete. And a good amount of Sam and Jack shippers did not like Pete. And some of them made it very, very plain in the bulletin boards and the message boards that they did not like Pete, pretty much want him to die, whatever. I mean, you can talk about that all you want. But 
at one convention, you have people walking around saying what they're going to do when they see the actor who portrays Pete. The actor who portrays Pete is telling, you know, this like blowback that he's getting from this certain fringe element of the fans about that. So, but he, but I have to say, he did not act as if that was representative of the whole fandom. And that seems to be what Ms. Robinson does in this article, to try to use a small percentage of the crazies that she's run into to label all of us as toxic. And I honestly believe that what she and what a lot of slights like say Screen Rant and Collider and Deadline and my favorite digital fish wrap site, comic book resources, they try to paint us as toxic and we are not toxic. We are not toxic. We are passionate fans. Yes, we are passionate about the fandom that we have spent years of investment in, time, money, building relationships, building friendships, coming together for charitable causes, reaching out to people when we need support because that fandom is where we feel safe and that fandom is where we feel supported. So yes, we are very passionate about defending that fandom and very, very passionate about pushing back when people try to paint us as a whole generalization in such a bad light. So yes, we have passion and our passion is deep. It is not superficial. It is not fly by night. It's a difference between being a dyed in the wool Philadelphia Eagles fan, which I am not, <laughs> or a bandwagon fan, which, you know, I'm not either. I'm just a Phillies fan, Philadelphia Eagles fan, because I was born here. Um, but that's neither here nor there. But because our passion is so deep and because we are just so invested in the particular fandom, whether it's Star Wars, Star Trek, DCU, MCU. This passion probably inspires, probably inspires a little bit of jealousy. I mean, you know, I can understand that. And probably Miss Robinson likes they hate us because they ain't us. You know, want to be us and can't be us. You know, haters are going to hate. Sounds simplistic, but that is truly, truly how it is. Oh, is that how you want to play it? Yeah. But even with fans being passionate, and even with the jealousy that that brings up in others who don't understand the particular or a particular fandom, I think authors like Miss Robinson in sites like Vanity Fair, or you have Hollywood Reporter, or you have Collider or CBR. I think. What they're really trying to do with these articles is a very, very interesting word that starts with P and it's very pervasive. So let's take a look at exactly what that word is. Now that word, that P word that I'm talking about is the word prejudice. So we have one definition, injury or damage resulting from some judgment or action and another in disregard of one's rights. Mm, no, not exactly it. Ah, number two, pre preconceived judgment or opinion. Mm. An adverse opinion or leaning formed without grounds or before sufficient knowledge an instance of such judgment or opinion. But I think we have a winner here. An irrational attitude of hostility directed against an individual, a group, a race, or their supposed characteristics. Bingo, we have a winner here. Yep. So you kind of have to ask yourself, why is there a need for this prejudice? Why, why is there such a need to spread this? Well, they basically need it to shame authentic fans like you or I or people that we know in the fandom into accepting this like empty calorie entertainment that's gutted a lot of the franchises, you know, that we love. They've gone from this wonderful rich body of lore to just a shell of its former self. And for passionate, authentic fans like you and I, 
that's not doing it. That's not doing it. And, you know, Ms. Robinson is basically using her animosity towards the Snyder Cut movement to shame fans who want to see what Zack Snyder is going to be giving them on HBO Max in 2021. So they're writing these articles to just prejudice opinion for people who don't know the fandom into giving them a false idea of what the fandom is. And you have to ask yourself, how sad is it that they have to do that? Oh, is that what you want? Yeah. So, now that I've given you my spicy take on all of this, what's your spicy take? So let me know in the comments. You know, do you think sites like Vanity Fair and Collider will continue to shame fans for any win that they get from now on, considering what we've seen with the Snyder Cut? Do you think Snyder Cut fans should be happy? And more importantly, how do you feel about being called a toxic fan? You know, let me let me know how that makes you feel. So um, thank you so much for enjoying this video. I'm still getting the hang of this uh, whole YouTube thing. So please like the video, share the link, and definitely subscribe if you haven't. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this spice. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay blessed. forgot the shirt 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 of the video um dark council dark council best show on youtube 8 p.m ish on drunk 3po's channel so check it out bye